Are you constantly having to retune your calcium reactor? I have the perfect solution, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome to another episode of CVTV. My name is Jeremy and I will be your host for today. So you have a reef tank and lately your corals are looking great and growing fast. Isn't that what we all want? At the same time you notice that your two parts supplementation is no longer able to keep up. You're going through alkalinity and calcium at a rate that's becoming cost prohibitive. Fellow local and online reefers are suggesting you need to switch to a calcium reactor. At the same time, as you do your research, you find endless problems and countless horror stories related to calcium reactors. Even experienced reefers, myself included, often find themselves frustrated at their expensive calcium reactor due to its constant need for adjustments. Clogged influent, inconsistent influent, leaks, exploding calcium reactors, and constantly chasing levels are all problems associated with calcium reactors. Then, just when you get it right, it only lasts for a few days. There are several reasons why a calcium reactor is so difficult to set up, but at the root of it all, it is because we are trying to push organic rich water with a small feed of pump or system manifold through a tiny needle valve. Salt water is very hard to regulate with needle valves. They easily clog with organic matter or small particulates from the media itself. This causes fluctuations in head pressure that, when combined with the use of needle valve, can create some major headaches. The Kamor FX STP is ideal for most applications that require continuous dosing of liquids like gradual water changes, sulfur denitrators, and even a hassle-free solution for using a calcium reactor. Kamor specifically designed the FX STP for continuous liquid dosing in aquariums. The FX STP pump features a compact size and quiet operation. What sets this pump apart from others is its ability to adjust the flow while running. It allows us to easily overcome any inconsistencies and set the reactor's effluent with enough pressure, reliable, and predictable metered rate. Before we get started with the installation, let's make sure that everything is included and nothing is missing from the box. The box should include Kamor FX STP dosing pump, power adapter, 1 8 to quarter inch tubing connector, silicone tubing. Now that we have accounted for all the parts, let's get ready for Kamor FX STP 101 calcium reactors. First, let's find a location that is optimal for our FX STP. The location should have easy access, it should be close to electrical power, close to sump and calcium reactor. The unit should also be installed higher than the sump and never directly above water. The length from the doser to the reactor should never exceed 8 feet and should be cut to length. Once we have found the perfect location, it is time to connect the tubing. Secure the intake tubing below the water level within the sump or aquarium. We suggest that you refrain from getting too close to the bottom to prevent detritus or substrate from being collected. Connect the larger tubing to the intake of the calcium reactor and the other end to the bottom barb on the doser head. An included barb connector will allow you to easily convert the 1 8 tubing to the larger quarter inch commonly used by most calcium reactors. With all hose connections made to and from the doser, let's plug the power supply into the pump and then to the power source. Let's not forget to remove any valves from the reactor's effluent or output. Operation is rather simple. The pump will turn on as soon as the power is supplied. A pump has a single dial controller. Push it once to run the pump, then push it once again to stop it. Rotate the same dial clockwise to increase the flow rate of the pump while turning it counterclockwise will reduce the flow rate. The first step is to prime the doser. Press and release the dial to start the pump and slowly rotate the dial all the way clockwise to obtain max flow. Depending on the total length of the tubing used, it could take several minutes for the water to start to come out of the output of the reactor. Once a pump has been fully primed, simply rotate the dial clockwise or counterclockwise to adjust the speed and flow rate of the effluent. Sometimes, depending on how long the pump has been running for or the length of the attached lines, a doser may need to be calibrated to ensure that the doser is in fact administering the correct amount of liquid. 
To calibrate the doser, press the dial to stop the pump, and then turn the knob so that run mode changes to calibration. Press the dial to select. Rotate the dial to enter the calibration flow rate. We recommend anywhere between 40 and 60 milliliters to calibrate. With the measuring container to collect the doser's output, press in the dial again to begin calibration. The pump will now begin to run for 60 seconds, which is conveniently displayed on the screen. When completed, enter the amount of fluid collected and retest to confirm. If necessary, repeat the process until the amount in the measuring container is the same as the calibration flow you have entered. It is normal to repeat the calibration process a couple of times. Well, that's our video for today. If you would like to learn more about the Camor XF STP doser, including detailed specs and beautiful high quality pictures, head on over to CoralView.com. If you have any questions or issues with the product, don't hesitate to visit our support portal at CoralView.com forward slash support. Our friendly support reps are eager to help you with any questions or issues you may have. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all the latest product reviews and tutorial videos. You can also follow us on Twitter at CoralView and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash CoralView Aquarium Products.